This is ABC 15 Mornings. The power of the monsoon. This was it, now destroyed. Homes ruined, are there more rain chances ahead? COVID-19 booster shots. It's very important that the data are shared and so everyone can take a look and make a decision as to what they want to do. Why doses could be available in a matter of weeks. Leaving Afghanistan. Their safety needs to be their top priority. Thousands of people working to escape the Taliban. Getting your money. This one may impact you. The Let Joe Know team with three settlements that could put cash in your wallet. Plus, we're talking things to do this Christmas on a Wednesday in August. On a Wednesday in August? <laughs> yes, and you are going to love what we're talking about, especially if you like the sun. Had to give them a little bit of a Yeah, uh, four months and a week away. Yeah, that's all. <laughs> like no one's counting, right? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Hey, good morning to you. Thank you so much for starting your Wednesday with us. We appreciate it. Kaylee O'Kelly alongside Nick Saletti. And it sounds like we're going to have a busy weather day. Yeah, let's talk about uh, most accurate forecast. Meteorologist Iris Hermosillo joining us right now. Iris, uh, you're saying uh, some people waking up to some wet roads as well. Some neighborhoods, right? And this is Queen Creek and our Queen Creek Valley Cam. And I saw some raindrops coming down a little earlier. And what you're going to see are that the roads look a little bit wet in some spots there, but overall not seeing any flooding. That's the good news there. These are just some light showers that essentially push through Queen Creek and the Santan Valley really quickly. Already those showers are starting to fizzle out as they slowly track towards the US 60, where much of the action has been has been near our foothills of northeastern and eastern Maricopa County, and that's where much of that activity is going to be through the morning, but we could still see some scattered thunderstorms across the Phoenix area too. So there is a chance for storms as you head out the door this morning and that storm chance will essentially continue through the day. In fact, today a little different from what we've seen where we wait until the evening for more storms. I think today we could see storms through the afternoon and that may affect you as you're maybe heading out the door this morning to drop kids off of school or even as you're heading back to school to pick them up. I wanted to show you a quick glimpse of future cast. Essentially, we've got a chance for thunderstorms here through the morning and then as we head into this afternoon, watch how storms fire up still. Here's one o'clock on future cast. Then through that three o'clock hour, four o'clock, even five o'clock and even even seven o'clock this evening, still a chance for storms in the valley. Then after that, we start to dry things out. So maybe grab that umbrella, stay weather aware today. We'll talk about the flooding risk around our state in that full forecast in just minutes. But Nohalani Graf, of course, keeping a close eye on those roads as we anticipate that rain today. Yeah, and definitely the message there, Iris, is leave sooner than later, not because of the backup now, but so that you can avoid any potential problems later this afternoon. For now, though, we do have dry roads across the valley and not a lot of issues either. This is that crash on the I-10 westbound. The tow truck is on scene. It's about to clear. Just give them some extra room across the central portion of the valley. The stack, the mini stack and the split all looking good this morning as traffic converges. We just have that typical slowdown as you come out of the Durango curve. The 101 across the entire valley west, north and east valley is moving right along this morning. We don't have any problems there. The east valley traffic flows are looking great this this morning too. If you're coming up from Maricopa, we don't even have any slowdown as you hit the 10 this morning on the 347. So that's a nice easy drive. If you give yourself some extra time, maybe you can stop for that cup of coffee. Just showing you we do have uh, traffic lights on scene here on the 202 at McClintock, but it's not blocking any traffic, but you can see folks are slowing down as they get to that area. Just give them some room until they clear. All right, good advice. No, hey, thank you. Want to talk about this? The mask mandate debate in schools could get expensive. And so let's get out to ABC 15's Angie Cayley right now talking money, masks and mandates. Angie. That's right, Nick. Governor Doug Ducey says he will withhold these COVID-19 funds from any school that requires these and also only in-person learning schools are are eligible for those funds. This as masks are recommended indoors. We don't know how few masks we can get away with in schools, but we have a raging uh, pandemic and we do know with good data that if children wear masks in school, they can be safe. Um, Governor Doug Ducey creating a $163 million school grant program from federal funds, but says schools with mandates in place will not be eligible for it. The governor pointing to a state law that bans mask mandates, which doesn't go into effect until the end of September. He says recommendations are fine and parents can make their own decisions, but Governor Ducey says mask mandates go too far, even as COVID-19 cases surge. 
Now districts have 10 days to rescind their requirements or lose out on the money. However, on the federal level, there could be other help on the way. I've had conversations with superintendents and they have asked if this goes in that direction, how do we get support? My message is open the school safely. Yes. We got your back. The school mask debate pushing on as the number of COVID positive pediatric cases is on the rise and so is the number of kids going to the hospital. More than 121,000 reported cases in the U.S. just last week. According to the American Academy of Pediatrics, more than 2,400 children in Arizona have ended up in the hospital. Now, as for the school mask fight, that law goes into effect September 28th. So we know this issue, of course, will be a hot topic for quite a while. Back to you. All right, our Angie Kaylee live this morning. Thank you. Starting Friday, Scottsdale Unified School District will begin a mask mandate. The governing board making that decision last night. The board also talking about ways to tackle COVID-19 in the district. So in the past, if a student had to quarantine, that was considered an absence. Well, now kids can be listed as in attendance because they will be offered distance learning. Uh, today, health officials are expected to recommend a third COVID booster shot for all Americans. It would happen eight months after the second dose of either the Pfizer or Moderna vaccine. The new recommendation is based on recent findings that show the vaccines are less effective against severe disease. Some experts say they want to see more data first from the CDC before recommending them to patients. This morning, about 60% of Americans are fully vaccinated. New data from the CDC shows the Delta variant now accounts for nearly 99% of all COVID cases in the U.S. For context, Delta only made up about 3% of cases back in May. Well, according to the National Weather Service, there were more than 33,000 strikes of lightning across the valley Monday night. Iris talked about this here on ABC 15 mornings. In this case, one of those strikes hit the truck of a man from Santan Valley and it caught fire. This big old dent right here was where the lightning struck. Um, if I actually got up and looked on top of the roof, uh, there's actually a small dent with a big white circle. Wow, and look at those flames. That's Richard Lang. He is a mechanic and he tells us he's going to try to salvage what he can from that truck. He also, though, tells us, I think you could agree, he feels very lucky that the rain likely kept those flames from spreading to his home. 607, the recent monsoon rains and flooding leaving behind a path of destruction in some communities. I went down to Gila Bend this week to get an in-depth look at what some of those people are still dealing with this morning. It started coming in fast. Floodwaters washing away Luis Henry's entire life in Gila Bend. This was it, now it destroyed. My house must have filled up like in 15 to 20 seconds. Luis shooting this video on his cell phone. You can see just how deep that water is. And it was even worse outside. The mayor's office says more than 100 homes were damaged in this weekend's flooding. Two people were killed. Were you worried that you weren't going to make it out of the house alive? Oh, yeah. yeah, I was. And this is how high the water came here in Luis's bedroom. He says he was sleeping while all of this went on. He thought maybe he left the faucet on. Instead, there was rushing water behind his door. Couldn't turn it off and finally got it, finally got it, open it, water just gushed. So it, it was all over. With only seconds to react, Luis says he grabbed his three dogs and put them in his truck and then headed towards his parents' house. Now realizing how easily he could have been swept away. I walked to running water up to chest level and I made it there. Got my parents out, got them up into this ladder. They got choppered out. Days later, Luis's home is finally drying out as volunteers work to salvage what they can. With no flood insurance, Luis isn't sure if he can rebuild, but says he walked away with what's most important. I was just glad to be alive. And sadly, Luis isn't the only one. I spoke with the mayor of Gila Bend. He tells me right now there are at least 140 homes, more than a dozen businesses that have been damaged or destroyed by this flooding. It is 6.09 pandemic travel up next here on ABC 15 mornings. If you have a fall trip, maybe you're planning to travel for the holidays. What the TSA is saying about masking up. Did you buy a ticket for a canceled event and can't get your money back? I'm investigator Joe Ducey with how three class action lawsuit settlements could mean money for you. Plus, I'm tracking your drive on this Wednesday morning, and this is the kind of view we like to see live drive heading eastbound on the 202 through Tempe. 
A few clouds helping to keep that sun out of your eyes on this Wednesday morning, but I've got your desert drive times coming up. Paul Passiao, we're happening today. Opening statements begin in R. Kelly's trial. The singer is facing sex trafficking charges, accused of using his own employees to recruit underage girls for sex. Kelly denies anything wrong here. The jury made up of seven men and five women. The TSA extending the federal travel mask mandate for trains, planes, buses, and other public transportation. That mandate was set to expire in less than four weeks, but with this recent rise in COVID-19 cases, masks are going to be required through at least January 18th of next year. And that extension, as you know, covers traditionally busy air travel holidays, including Thanksgiving, Christmas and New Year's. Texas Governor Greg Abbott has tested positive for COVID-19. The governor releasing a statement saying he is fully vaccinated, which is likely the reason why he's not experiencing any symptoms. He is receiving the monoclonal antibody treatment. COVID cases are dramatically rising in Texas right now. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time. Sponsored by Accident Law Group. A quarter past the top of the hour. I'm no Heilani Graf in for Megan Thompson today. Taking a look at your desert drive times. Wide view of the maps. You can see we've got green flows pretty much everywhere. And the speed limit, or at least above it a little bit in some areas, is what we're catching on our major valley highways this morning. Giving you a view around the valley today on the I-17 at Dunlap. You can see there are not a lot of people on the road yet. But you know within the next hour that's really going to change. On the I-10 at 27th Avenue, that's probably where we see the most cars as you approach the downtown area. The US 60 at Gilbert is rolling right along and same if you're coming closer to Priest. So here's a look at those drive times this morning. If you're coming in from the far west valley, it's a 20 minute ride from the 303 to the mini stack. Coming down the 17, you'll get there in no time at all. So if you want to give yourself some extra time to stop for some breakfast along the way, you know, go through the drive through, pick up some coffee. I think you're just fine there. Same with the 51 getting from the from the 101 down to the mini stack. That's a, about a 15 minute drive this morning as well. And just giving you a clearer view of the 17 right before that traffic really starts to add up. Durango curve, you know, not bad there at Dunlap. You can see a few more cars, but right now you're at least going to go the speed limit. So it's looking pretty good all the way on up to Bell. Now let's check in with meteorologist Iris Hermosillo, who is tracking our storm chances for today. So far, how do we look, Iris? You're making us hungry, first of all. No, right? <laughs> right? But yeah, coffee you know, and breakfast. <laughs> the good news is that the roads over overall dry this morning as we're looking at a lot of cloud cover as we look live from our South Mountain camera, but not a whole lot of rain in the valley at this moment, but we're not in the clear. I think we've got a chance for at least some spotty storms as we start the day today, so I'm watching for that on radar. I'm also seeing very muggy conditions out there, so as you step outside, that monsoon moisture will hit you again. It's 82 degrees, but that dew point is sitting at 71 degrees right in that sticky range. As you look at Desert Doppler radar, again, quiet across the valley despite those thick clouds. We did have a little shower pop up near Queen Creek, but the bulk of the action has essentially been over some of that higher terrain just east of the Phoenix metro area in that northeast pocket of Maricopa County. And I think that's going to continue to be the main focus for thunderstorms, with some of these thunderstorms producing a lot of lightning and heavy rain, too. In fact, it's a loud start in Strawberry and Pine, Payson as well. I have not seen any new flash flood alerts pop up for these areas, but I will let you know if they do, especially as we start to see some of this heavier rain in some of our burn scar locations, including right near Globe too. So much of the action is going to be focused along the rim here this morning, but I think a few storms are at least possible further to the west, including closer to the valley. Today, a 50% chance for thunderstorms and we're under a flash flood watch. After today, things are changing with temperatures staying in the 90s for a few days, but all in all, drying things out. So let me break it down a little further for you. Today, a high of 95 degrees. We're starting out in the 80s. I think we'll dip down into the 70s for a little bit. And essentially, we've got a chance for scattered thunderstorms through the day today. So a chance for a few storms this morning. And then as we go into midday and this afternoon, storms will continue to be possible. So unlike the last few days where we've had to wait until the evening time or even nighttime hours for new storms to get going today, I think we could see storms through the afternoon and then essentially those storm chances are tapering off after eight o'clock and then we're starting to dry things out overnight. By tomorrow, look for mostly sunny skies. No storm chances tomorrow because our weather pattern is changing. So essentially, 
is you look at future cast. We have this disturbance that's lifting through our state. That's bringing the storm chances today, keeping that monsoon moisture around too. But then we've got a pattern change in that we've got a storm system from the northwest that's essentially going to swing a cold front into our state, and that will push out that monsoon moisture and start to dry things out. So that disturbance lifts to the north. The next few days we get some drier air in here, lower humidity, and that area of low pressure keeps us storm free through the weekend with another one right behind it. Eventually our ridge of high pressure may try to rebuild and we start to see those storm chances back by the middle of next week for parts of our state, but not for the valley for now looking mostly sunny through the weekend. So if you've been waiting to get your car wash, look at Friday 98 degrees. That might be a good car wash day. You've got the green light too through the weekend with conditions staying dry through the weekend. And here's what I'm most excited for lower humidity as we head into the weekend. So Saturday make some plans to get outdoors, especially in the morning. We'll drop to 78 for a low. It's going to feel less humid, so more comfortable to be outside. It will be sunny and will heat up to about 99 degrees Saturday afternoon, but overall not a bad looking forecast for mid August, right? Mid to, mid to late August temperatures then back into the low hundreds, but starting Sunday and overall not too far from the average for this time of year. 618 from canceled concert refunds to false advertising claims for brain supplements. Class action lawsuits aim to hold companies accountable. On new this morning, the Let Joe Know team looks at three lawsuit settlements that could mean money in your pocket. Vivid Seats is an online ticket resale site. A class action lawsuit alleges they had a 100% buyer refund guarantee that wasn't being followed. If you bought tickets through Vivid Seats and you didn't receive 100% of your money back due to the events getting canceled, this one may impact you. Scott Hardy with TopClassActions.com says if you bought a ticket before April 2021 for an event between September 2016 and April of this year that was postponed, rescheduled, or canceled, you qualify for cash back or a 110% credit towards a future ticket. Another class action suit alleges the supplement Nareva falsely advertised products as being clinically and scientifically proven to enhance performance. A settlement means if you bought products between January 2019 and April 23rd of this year, you could get up to $65 back with proof. Blue Cross Blue Shield ensures one in three Americans. A lawsuit accuses them of trying to limit market competition, and the settlement is paying out $2.67 billion. It's also making Blue Cross Blue Shield work extra hard to make sure there's competition in the market so they're not the only place to shop for. You qualify if you were covered by the insurer between February 2008 and October 2020. How much of that $2.67 billion you could get depends on the number of claims filed, premiums paid, and whether the insurance was fully insured or self-funded. With that amount of money, it is worth filing a claim. Now, none of these businesses claim any wrongdoing and deadlines are coming up. Go to abc15.com slash let Joe know for links to see if you qualify. I'm Investigator Joe Deuce. If you got a problem, let me know. New for you this morning, more airline employees are turning now to self-defense training. These courses teach them how to defuse situations and also to protect themselves as well as other passengers. And over the past year, as you know, we have seen a dramatic rise in flight attendants being verbally and physically attacked on flights. A hotel chain is testing an a la carte system for its amenities. MCR Hotels is the fourth largest hotel chain in the nation. Okay, so how's this going to work? Early check in, early check out. That would cost you about 20 bucks. That'd be worth it, right? Uh, using the pool might be free uh, during the morning on weekdays, but come with a small fee for weekends. Using the gym, maybe breakfast, that would also come with an additional charge or maybe cost you less if you didn't use those things. Still ahead here on ABC 15 Mornings, don't put off that visit to the doctor anymore. The American Heart Association is urging everyone to get that checkup. Plus, it's an app that was blamed for cyberbullying and hate speech. So why after a four-year hiatus is it making a comeback? Okay, serious question here. When was the last time you saw your doctor? Think about this for a second. The American Heart Association is launching a new campaign. It's called Doctor. It has been too long. Now, this is a reminder not to skip that routine checkup. The doctors are stressing it is easier to treat a condition that's caught early. It's also why prevention appointments are crucial. All these conditions that people had, they have risk factors for other bigger things. I know we've talked in the past about um, hypertension being a risk factor for heart attacks, hypertension being a risk factor for strokes. 
you are worth it. You got to go. And when you do go to see your doctor, make sure you take along a detailed list of questions you might have, some concerns, and also a list of your medications. Now, the pandemic it changed the way we work, exercise, even entertain, which experts say could have a lasting impact on home design. It's on your bulletin board this morning. So first up, private spaces are back. That's a good thing, right? As families work and learn from home, open layouts are actually dwindling. Second, more people want outdoor space. Design experts say customers are prioritizing backyards to make better entertaining spaces. Finally, bold is back. It's believed people are tired of staring at white walls and neutral colors, so bright colors are taking over walls and fabrics in all areas of our homes. Give your living space a little post-pandemic upgrade with these tips from our bulletin board. Well, if you are already longing for the holiday season, how about some good news for you? Two Christmas themed pop up bars are coming back to downtown Phoenix this year. Yeah, how about this miracle will take over at floor 13 rooftop bar there at the Hilton Garden Inn and Sippin' Santa is coming back at Bitter and Twisted <laughs> Cocktail Bar. Oh, that sounds like that could be a fun night, right? There's going to be festive decor, special holiday themed drinks too, like the Christmas Politan and the Chris Kringle Colada. Oh, okay. If you like Chris Kringle Colada. And walk, what is it? And Dancing in the rain? In getting the caught snow. in the rain, okay. Yeah. We I can was move close. this into the break. <laughs> no, 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 no. You That's were close, one. and that I counts. Was close enough. Hey, next at 630, when the ground becomes so saturated, the water has nowhere else to go, right? So a look at the historic flooding happening in Flagstaff. Plus, speeding up evacuations in Afghanistan. The Taliban pledging to let Americans and Afghans get to the airport safely as thousands remain on the ground hoping to leave the country. And I'm Patrick Hayes, alive in Washington Park, where the city of Phoenix is hosting a COVID-19 testing clinic. Those details coming up. You know, the road's much drier as you get ready to head outside, but those chances for storms, they're sticking around. In fact, all morning through the afternoon, I've got your most accurate forecast right after the break.